Hello and welcome everyone. Thank you very much for tuning in today. This is going to be a very special presentation that will cover the first few warm-ups for the year for civics and government. Let me just remind you that you are to complete a question of the day or an exercise at the beginning of each day's lesson. Please understand that for each day's lesson, not only will we find a question and exercise, but you'll also find a corresponding answer to that said question. Let me go ahead and illustrate my point here to further convey how warm-ups are supposed to be done. For clarity and for support, please make sure that you go to Google Classroom first and open up the class portal. When you go to Google Classroom, you'll be able to click on your corresponding class. And you'll be able to then open up the Classwork tab. Please realize that all of your warm-ups for the entire year will be posted under the Topics tab of Warm-ups and Questions of the Day. For the first cycle, you're going to click on the Google Doc right here, which says Social Studies Online Intro Warm-up Packet. This year, because of modifications, all warm-ups will be on a Google Doc on Google Classroom. To further convey my point, please make sure that you write down that day's said question on the actual Google Doc. <clears throat> and then listen carefully for the answer, which you can go ahead and format like this for the entire question. Please also make sure for grading purposes that you also go ahead and format your font in a different color so that when grading it, I'll be able to see your own responses to the particular questions. Please also realize before we begin that warm-ups will be taking place and administered once every two weeks in terms of their administration and grading. So this warm-up cycle has the first week, since I saw all of you at multiple different times, and then also contains the two lessons that are taking place during the four-day week after Labor Day, so Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Please remember to submit your warm-ups every Sunday by 12 midnight. Let's begin. The first question of the day is from the first week of school. What is civics and government, and why is a class like this incredibly relevant and important? Here's your answer to the question today. Simply put, civics is the study of individual action within a governmental unit that stresses involvement. In other words, the study of civics teaches us and shows us how we as citizens can get involved, stay informed, and of course, take action. The study of government, however, is the institutions of power that express power and control over us as citizens. Many people, when they think about government, different words come to mind. However, from a literal sense, from a field of study, studying government allows us the chance to study government as an institution that has power, and we analyze how that power is exercised over us. Now, let's just be very clear. There are many different reasons as to why one would want to study civics and government. Knowing and acting on rights and responsibilities is crucial. And also, knowing how to partake in government processes is really important. Furthermore, Knowing how to make educated decisions is so incredibly valuable. Knowing how government works allows us to make changes to improve it and to better it for the day of tomorrow. So in many ways, this is a contemporary social studies class which will teach you about many modern issues, but in a sense, you're also preparing yourself for future civic engagement. So down the road, as a citizen with rights and responsibilities, you'll be able to engage with the world around. Let's go ahead to the next question of the day. So this is for after Labor Day. Why are rights and responsibilities important for understanding and acting on citizenship? For those of you guys who completed the lesson, you'll already be aware of the fact that we talked about rights and responsibilities that come with US citizenship in this class. So let's delve deeper on that discussion. Let's define what rights are. Rights are special powers given to you that can never be taken away. In a sense, our rights come from the United States Constitution and our rights are often deemed to be inalienable. Responsibilities, on the other hand, are special actions asked of you for the well-being of your community. When you think about what it means to be responsible, typically teachers stress responsibility for their students so that they can take matters into their own hands and be their own advocate for success. When you think about responsibilities from a civic standpoint, it's acting in a way that benefits everybody and being mindful of everyone. There's several key reasons to know your rights and responsibilities. Knowing your rights allows you to be protected and safe. Additionally, knowing your rights allows you to be educated and empowered. And from that education and empowerment, you can act on those feelings and said knowledge to bring about change. Knowing responsibilities helps the functionality of government. 
Think about it. If you have people who actually follow through in their responsibilities as citizens, from the little things to the big things, like wearing a mask to stop the spread of COVID-19, or paying your taxes to pay for the social welfare programs that we have, that's fundamentally important. And additionally, if people act on responsibilities together, life will be more beneficial and positive for all. The American dream construct is not just for a select group of people, it's for everybody. And people ought to have the chance to engage with their government and each other in society in a fair and equitable way so that life is beneficial, healthy, and free for all. Let's go ahead to the last and final question of the day. Why does American citizenship have such appeal? What specific things drive people to aspire and attain U.S. citizenship? So one of the first, and this is probably the biggest reason why U.S. citizenship has so, so much appeal, is that it's synonymously known as the most sought after citizenship in the entire world. Now, there are many reasons as to why this is the case. However, please keep in mind that U.S. citizenship appeals to most people just because of the rights and responsibilities that simply come with it. The many rights and privileges that are exclusively for U.S. citizens allows for the American people to feel empowered, safe, and secure. In some other countries around the world, rights and rules and regulations are always changing. In the United States, in theory, the rights and the allotted responsibilities that come to the people of the citizenry stay the same. The standard of living is better in the United States. We have fostered the world's greatest economy, and to an extent, I feel like many people would want to be part of that, if not for themselves, then for their family and for future generations. Economic and educational opportunities are also important too. When we say economic, we're not just talking about a job for an individual person, but we're also, of course, alluding to the fact that the overall opportunities for those people coming to the United States are plentiful. The educational opportunities, too, are abundant in the United States. There's many foreign students from countries who come here to reap the benefits of educational institutions. Also, our American values are agreed to be helpful for whole families in this way. You can think of values as being something pertaining to our religious background. You can think of values in terms of our morality. America actually has a positive reputation in most parts of the world for being that moral standard. <clears throat> and last but not least, America is diverse in its makeup and accepting of all peoples. And it draws on that diversity to foster opportunity for others and others. Please realize that the most important thing that most incoming U.S. citizens do embody is this unique American experience where the diversity and background contributes to the identity of the American fabric as we know it. So there you have it. Those are all the answers to all the questions of the day. Please just make sure that you fill out your Google Doc accordingly and message if you have any questions before Sunday submission at midnight. Thank you very much for paying close attention, and please realize that all these worms are fair game for possible tests or quiz questions down the road. Thank you.